Hi, Steve here. Welcome to my channel. And I got a, I got a, uh, you're going to hear some crunching in the background. That's my dog chewing on a plastic bone. Uh, it's better than him barking. So I think uh, he, he did just unfortunately move closer to the microphone. <laughs> he, must, he must have known it was showtime. But anyway, um, I thought I had my headphones on. I guess I don't. So uh, that's okay too. So we have, um, this is a 1955 movie called Unchained. This is the movie that Unchained Melody was originally written specifically for this movie as the theme song for the movie. And it's a prison movie. It's about prison. Uh, it's, a, it's a men's prison. And it was a different kind of prison. They did a lot of experimental prisons back in the day. Uh, not a lot, but they did some. Some were, uh, you know, basic, uh, they were movies... I mean, there were experiments in human psychology for, for much of it to see if there was a better way to handle prisoners in prison system. And, you know, they, uh, they tried different things. This is a prison. It tells the story in here of the, this prison, Chino, in California. And it had about 2,000 inmates, and they just did a whole different thing. There was no guards, no guns. Well, very few guards, no guns. And they could easily escape at any time and the, the I guess we'll call him the warden actually showed them how <laughs> but if they got if they escaped and were caught they'd be convicted of another felony escaping from prison and it would, there'd be time set time added on to their sentence so once they were free outside the fence they actually weren't free because if they ever got caught, they'd be incarcerated for a longer period of time. So they had special choices to, you know, they had uh, choices to make. They could escape anytime they wanted to. There was no guards or guns and nobody's going to shoot them. But if they ever got caught, consequences, right? Because they still owe a debt to society, I suppose, for what they were found guilty for originally. And it's an interesting thing. And I think that's all based on uh, true events, that part. Uh, as far as the characters and here and the character development, the story lines with the characters, well, I think that's probably made up. I don't know that for a fact, but that would be typical of most movies. Uh, this one does not start off by saying it's a documentary, so documentary would be closer to the truth. So I think it's more just, a, you know, it's a fiction, work of fiction. Except for the prison, I know, I think really did exist and really was an experimental prison for a period of time. I'm not sure how long that lasted, but... Uh, so let's go on with the story here. So... I won't get into too much more of the background of that until I do a little more research if I if I choose to do that. But I did want to pull up this movie because, you know, I did, I did the thing with um, the Nobel Prize recipient's family and the interview and all that. And I think that there's so much... Angelina sung the song Unchained Melody beautifully. Different than I've heard her sing it before because it's a different event. And Angelina is smart enough and in tune enough with things to know that you know, there's an appropriate, uh, certain things are appropriate in one setting where they're not so appropriate in another setting. For example, in this, when she sang the movie at the, or when she sang Unchained Melody at the Nobel Prize thing, her, she looked very angelic, like a goddess. But it wasn't overstated. It wasn't gaudy. It wasn't too much. It was just enough. The crown, the tiara, the simple earrings, the bracelet. The subdued fingernail polish, bare feet, of course, because you know we all know the story on that. And the gown actually looked very angelic. And she's there to pay tribute to this lady that's been in prison for a long time. She's going to be in prison for a longer time unless there's some intervention along the way. Um, the, inter the interview we talked to her, her family, and all the other things, and it's you know. The extraordinary courage and strength that some people demonstrate in their life for a cause or a concept or a thought, it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's more than touching and moving. It's more, I mean, you got you to gotta have some respect and some, I don't know, but I'll, there's probably a lot of words I could try to come up with. I'm not having them very much luck right now. Should have more coffee, I guess, right? The... But, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot to respect about somebody that has that sort of uh, integrity, I guess. And her whole life, she hasn't seen, her kids haven't seen her since they were nine. I think they're, well, I wish I could remember what age they were. They're somewhere between the ages of 17 and 21. I, you know, I can't come up with the exact age in my mind right now. But they haven't seen their mother in a long time. And uh, there's a boy and a girl. 
And the girl uh, doesn't believe she'll ever see her mother again because she's got 11 more years left on her sentence and she's going to be tried for other things and sentenced to more years eventually, the way the system works where she's being kept a prisoner. So this is different because this isn't about that. It's not necessarily about, uh, um, you know, speaking out and being put in prison because you said things that weren't agreeable to the people in charge. It's not, not that. These are actual, for the most part, actual criminals. And um, the lead character is kind of a yes and no kind of criminal. Yeah, he's in prison because he did something, but maybe he was might have been justified now he did it or just made a poor choice and how he handled it. Yada, yada. Those, you know, it's a whole story thing, right? But the only place where this uh, Unchained Melody, you hear the melody throughout the movie at various places. It tells the story. The only place it actually is sung is near the end. The movie is one hour, 12 minutes, and 42 seconds long. And uh, this, the actual song, the only time we hear the song song, it's at, okay, it's at about 102.35. Uh, so the, there's only 10 more minutes left in the movie. And, you know, then this is the first time we hear anybody sing Unchained Melody. It's this gentleman laying on the bed here. He's singing to the other inmates while one of the other inmates plays the guitar in the background. And when you watch the whole movie, it puts the, the song into context, the lyrics of the song into context. And it's a different situation than the Nobel Peace Prize situation. But it, there's some similarities in a sense. I think when you watch this, there's a simplicity to it, and then there's a, a part that's so complicated. Basically, the right and wrong stuff, you know, the choices we make, the, the responsibilities, you know, the consequences and all the other things. And, of course, the, the longing to want to be out, to be free, to go see your family, to be with your wife, your children, whatever the case might be. Girlfriend, doesn't matter. Or just not be anybody, just be free, right? So this is very, it's kind of an interesting movie. Uh, if you like these old kind of movies. So I think I'm going to play the, the whole movie on here. I don't know if it's going to get blocked or copyrighted. It might, I might even get a strike. Who knows? But um, I'm just, I just think it's interesting enough that uh, some of you may want to watch it. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to play the song, the part where there's actual singing. Some of you may just want to see that. So I'm going to play that first. Then I'm going to play the movie, and you can stay or leave up to you. And... Um, just know that the singing part of it is at the end. I found myself, I watched the whole thing this morning, I found myself waiting for that part, which is <laughs> probably by playing it in the front, I'm uh, uh, going to uh, free the audience to not have to stick around to wait for that part, right? But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an activist. Solid, man. <laughs> Let's go ahead and listen. Darling. Oops. I started a little too early, hang on, or a little bit too late. We might have to start in this part. All I ask is a fair sentence. We'll take those facts into consideration. You'll get our decision tonight. That's all. That guy's the lead character. Oh, my love, my darling, I've hungered for your touch alone, lonely time. Time goes by so slowly. And time can do so much for you, still mine. I need your love. I need your love. God speed your love. Hey, 
Jerry, it's almost seven o'clock. Gosh, I gotta get to the radio. Okay, so that's the only place in the movie where it's actually sung by anybody. And uh, like I said, it's near the end. So they tried to show the guys all in a state of contemplation there, I would, I would guess, um, of their situation. And if you watch the whole movie, that makes a lot more sense to you. But anyway, that, that's, that's that. And the reason I wanted to show this is because, you know, this is the origin of the song Unchained Melody. It was written specifically for this movie, 1955. And, of course, the Righteous Brothers, 1965, is when they came out with their iconic, uh, that's how most of us know the song, and that's how most of us will probably remember the song for a long time. But, um, you know, Bobby Hedford did just a fantastic job with that. Um, so, I, I thought you might like to see the background. Maybe not. not. Not for everybody, probably. But there you go. There's the song. There it is in the movie, and I'll put in the description box uh, some. There's a little bit of information down below here about the movie and so on. If you're interested, uh, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the movie. I'm gonna put it on full screen so you can get the full experience. So that means my picture will be gone, and I'll try to be quiet in the background so as not to disturb your viewing pleasure. So let us start this over. <laughs> Enjoy the movie, guys. convicted of a felony in the state of California. His destination, Chief Pomona Alley. This is the largest honor prison in the world. 2,000 men live here. Murderers, armed robbers, forgers, safe crackers, petty thieves. But there are no guns to hold them, no walls, no armed guards. Just a man and an idea. A man named Scudder. The idea that prisoner people. This is their story, photographed entirely at Chino, as it happened. Keep up. What did you think I was going to do back there? Let's go. What is this anyhow? That guy slugs a guard and nobody lays a hand on him. He's been like that ever since they first brought him in. You should have seen him in jail. It took three of them guys to handle him. But they never broke him down. What's he in for? Almost killed a guy that worked for him with his fists. You'll be living here for the next 45 days. Give you a chance to get used to Chino before you move in at the minimum security norms. Supervisor will sign you to your beds. Hey, you are, sir. Thank you. 
soon as you get your beds inside, walk outside to your left, the big building. It's a mess hall, have lunch. That's all. You mean we go eat without a guard? That's right. And by the way, this afternoon you'll get a look at the place and meet Scudder. Sorry to keep you waiting. My name's Scudder. Guess you got a pretty good idea what Chino looks like now. You know why you men were picked for Chino? They told me it was because of my good record. That's right. Now, some of you are first offenders, and some of you have been in prison before. But we believe that each one of you has the guts to take responsibility and freedom. Only one man in four convicted in this state ever gets to Chino. Anyone here didn't want to come? I didn't. Want to change? It's not too late. No. This place is the same as any, I guess. I don't think you'll find that's true. You'll all be going out sooner or later. You'll have to face decisions then, every day. You've got to face them here, too, every day. This is the biggest one right here. The fence. You'll have plenty of chances to escape. There are no walls to stop you. And no gun. We threw them away 13 years ago when we first opened up this place. There's nothing to stop you here except yourselves. Would you mind letting me have your jacket, please? In case you do decide to go over, I'll show you how to do it. Put your jacket over the top of the barbed wire like this. Then you won't get all cut up going over. But remember, if you do go over, once your feet hit the other side of that rope, you can never come back. There'll be a new felony on your record and more time to do. Is it true our families and friends can visit us on the grounds? That's right. Saturdays and Sundays. How many of you are expecting visitors? I do. Yeah. yeah. I am. Yes. yes. I am. Well, good. That's fine. Uh, one other thing. If you have a gripe or problem or a suggestion, come to me with it. Don't keep it to yourselves. We'll try our best and... We expect the same from you. Good luck.
guy. He's cracked. All that blowing about going out of here the right way. Who's he kidding? There's only one way to play at any of these dumps. They're on one side, we're on the other, we gotta ride their tails. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, gotta stick together. I went Scudder's eyes all the time he was talking. There's something about him I believe. I'll tell you one thing, he ain't yellow. <laughs> any of us could have gone over that fence right then. Nobody tried it. Well, what do you know? Squid Eyes is one of those psychologists. I thought they picked the guys to come here. What did they pick you for? A comedian? <laughs> Why, you little sort of. Hey, knock it off a minute, you guys. Take a look at that. That kid was with a top band before he got his fingers jammed. Who sold you that? Did you ever notice the way he looks at you like he knows what you're thinking? Like he was something different? I've seen bums like him playing in beer joints all over the country. He's nothing. Somebody's gonna kill that guy. Listen, you got a tough enough job taking care of yourself in here. The way you're going, you won't get past the first seven marks in that match folder of yours. You wanna bet? Don't ever say those words to me. I've been making books since I was 17. The percentage is always with the house. And I'm the house. Can't lose. And how come you're in here? That's a low blow. Pick a card. Wait till you see this boy come in the bat. He'll clean the bases. There was a scout out from the Cardinals last week looking him over. They want him in St. Louis when he gets out. St. Louis? That guy's wanted all over the country. <laughs> Mr. Simons, Mr. Clark, and Mr. Davitt, please greet your guests in the visiting room. Mr. Simons, Mr. Clark, and Mr. Davitt, please greet your guests in the visiting room. Stay away from me. Glad to see you, Steve. Seems like a year. I know. It's just like they said. I can't believe it. You're still a prison. every day, Steve. How are you getting along? Fine. How about you? You look tired. I'm okay. I'll bring you in next time. You're Steve. never going to bring him here. And I don't want you to come again either. Steve. I'm sorry, Mary. I can't stand having you or the boy see me here. I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't see you. We'll be together soon. I'm getting out of here. What do you mean, Steve? I'm going over that fence the first chance I get. Oh, why they locked me up? Can't a man fight for the things that belong to him? Hi, Steve. Oh, hi, Joe. Wait for me, Mary. I'm counting on you. I've been telling you about. 
He doesn't say much, but he's burning inside all the time. He'll never last. Be a lot of help in making it over the fence for good. I'm nursing him along nice and easy. You won't have to wait long, Elaine. Just be careful, honey. I don't want anything to happen to you. You sure look great. You know, I didn't know whether you'd come out here to visit me or not. I don't know why you'd say a thing like that. You're the one guy who always treated me like I was someone. I don't forget. Here, Joe. Try these. Peanut butter and jelly. I made them myself. Hey, you know, we're gonna get married just as soon as I get out of here. I'm not taking any chances of losing you. We can do all the things we wanted to. But our, uh, are you sure the money's safe? Safe and sound, waiting for us, Elaine. Just like a dowry. A what? Uh, forget it. Well, just don't make me wait too long. I need you, Joe. Well, what I wouldn't give right now. It won't be long, honey. Not long at all. yesterday. Took them with me, showed them to a friend of mine, top surgeon. He seems to think he can fix your hand, Eddie. I'm getting along all right in here. I've got a good record, haven't I? Good. And you got no right sticking your nose in my business. Why don't you leave me alone? Okay, Eddie. Mr. Scudder. I saw a couple of doctors right after it happened. They said there was no chance. He's a top man, Eddie. He seems to think there is a chance. No. No, it just wouldn't work. I know it. Well, let me know if you change your mind. Thanks. But this hired man we both trusted ran away with our money and, and, and Steve just went after him in, in his own way. He almost killed a man who hadn't even been proven guilty. I've lived with Steve nine years. And he's the finest person I've ever met. But he has a blind spot. He was raised on this little ranch away from everybody and, and, and he always lived by his own rule. He doesn't understand that, that a man can't live by his own law. He's never had to. That's what he's got to learn here. He's so changed. Toward me, too. I'm afraid, Mr. Scudder. Really afraid. Time's up. You had to pick the toughest work in the whole place. 
Those torches will shake you loose in a week. I told you we should ask for field work. Those nice open fields. We can transfer out there later on than I'm watching this so close. Maybe you're right. If I last till then. Hi, Jerry. How'd it go? My hands are numb. Clear up to the elbow. They'll toughen up. First few days are always rough. Welding will make you a good trade. You really think I could be a welder? No question about it. Good money, too. My boys are in demand when they finish. All of them? All of them. I'm going to be the best welder you've ever had, Mr. Miller. How's your hand, Eddie? Fine. I don't think you better do this kind of work, Eddie. Why not? I like it. I like what you can do with those torches. Sure is funny to twist a piece of steel any way you want it to go. Better take it easy. Uh, you guys were suckers to get in that welding department. Soldering is a racket. Move over, kid. You got my locker. This is the locker Mr. Miller assigned to me this morning. Shove off. Don't oh, get tough, fingers. Your friend Miller just stepped on his side. And there ain't any scout masters around to take care of you. Now get yourself another locker. This one's good. Hey, lay off, Sander! Like I told you, I'll burn off your finger and damage you! I felt like using your methods many times. When I was 26, I had to stand in a cell in the state prison and watch boys being whipped. Boys, David. Whipped unconscious, half dead. I've had to stand by and see men beaten, starved. Some of them just as tough as you. I hear we have a chance for something else. I have a full report of what went on in the welding shop today. The supervisor made the mistake, not you. Shouldn't have left the shop. You had a good reason for what you did, but I'm still worried about that pattern of yours, following your impulses anytime you feel like it. That's why I called you in here. You mean this doesn't go in my record? No. I took a calculated gamble when I accepted you for Chino, David. I was warned about you. Stay out of trouble. You know, it's funny about this place. Everything seems different. You included. I am different, Joe. I don't have to fake anything when I come out here. I've been watching the people together. You know, the families, the kids and everything been remembering things that happened when I was a kid. Before every day got to be a fight. I'm tired of fighting. Well, you won't have to anymore. You can count on it. I got five weeks left before we get transferred to minimum security. Big guy, damn it. We're just waiting. We'll be out of here and over the border before anyone finds out. Shouldn't I uh, pick up the money? No, no, not yet. I'm sure you can make it out of here without getting caught, Joe. Can't miss. We're going over this place foot by foot. We're gonna lay it out, time it, rehearse it. Don't worry, honey. You and I are practically on the beach of Acapulco right now. What do you want to talk to me about? Well, I didn't want to tell you in front of all the other people. Is there anything wrong with Wynn? No, no, he's all right. What have you told him about me? But you're going to be away all winter. On business. Does he believe you? I don't know. I think he does. But he doesn't understand. He'll never understand if he finds out I'm in prison. That's what I want to tell you, Steve. I went to see Mr. Scudder. When? The last time I was here. I needed help. Stay away from him. I want you to keep coming out here, though. I 
gotta have Scudder and the rest of these guys think everything's just fine. That'll make it easier when I'm ready. You're so different. Did anybody ever lock you up? show you your bunks and give you everything you need. Everything? <laughs> Come on, I'll get you fixed up. Headphones for each bunk? Yeah. What are the rules for listening to the radio? From 5 to 11 at night, 11 to 11 on Sundays. Can we hear any program we want? Sure. Boy, what a change. At Quentin, they wouldn't let us hear any crime stories. Heck, you could lean over to the next cell and listen to a better murder story than you ever heard on the radio. I remember. <laughs> I was at Quentin, too. Hey, that makes us, what do you call a... I don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, bed 42. Daddy? Yeah. This is yours. Your wife and son? Yes, it is. They are? No, thanks. Special count. All men on your bed. What's this for? Looks like somebody's gone over the fence. I didn't hear any siren. No, I didn't hear. How come that bed's empty? That guy's in the hospital. Looks like everything checks out here. Does uh, this happen very often? The place wouldn't last long if it did. And it gets tough sometimes. Guy gets worried about his wife. Kid gets sick. Maybe he just gets sick himself. Goes over the fence. <laughs> Can I have your attention, men? I don't like secrecy or rumors here or anywhere else. I want each of you men to know the facts. Now, last night, two inmates went over the fence. They broke into a home of one of the families living near here. They tied them up, stole their car, their clothes, and their money. And they did something else, too. They gambled with the freedom of every man in Chino. The people in the valley are frightened. No one was hurt this time, but they're wondering and asking about the next time. The troublemakers outside the ones who've always wanted walls around you and a gun in your backs 24 hours a day, have already started the pressure. This place will always depend on what happens to the next man who comes here. And the next. One more man who goes over that fence could destroy Chino. Now it's up to you. 
H up here. That's all. I'll bet they made it over the border. Not without money. They took almost $200 from that family. What's the matter, Howard? You saw you weren't with them? The men's council met this morning. We don't like what those guys did. Decided to kick up a collection, try to pay back that family. Now, most of us got some money here they're holding for us till we get out. Yeah. Now, there's no pressure about this, but if any of you want to give something, put me down for a buck. Good. Same for me, Bill. Count me in. Me too. Make mine two bucks, Bill. I think you better skip it, Johnny. You'll need all you got going out on parole next month. I said two bucks. All right, Johnny. How about you? You kidding? I guess I am asking you for anything. What do you mean by that? I've been in prison nine years. I got just one left. I'm staying out of trouble. You sure talk big for a murderer. Some guy to be standing up for us on the council. Come on, man. let's get some chow. Ready to go eat? Later. You go ahead. No, no, I'll wait around for you. Why didn't you slug him? I wanted to kill him. Surprised? I learned to fight early, not in a ring in the street. And when I hated, I wanted to kill. Nine years ago, I did. A guy like Sanders? Yeah, that kind of answer's not good enough. When you kill a man, you don't forget. Ever. You think Scudder was on the level about people wanting to close this place? You really don't know much about Chino, do you? Let me tell you something. This guy Scudder fought all his life for this place. Got kicked out of plenty of jobs because he wouldn't play ball with the politicians. Finally, they let him have 37 guys from San Quentin. Every kind of criminal, even murderers. They brought them down here and took them out of their monkey suits. And treated them like, like people. Let them see their women and their kids. Let them take a good trade to learn. Built a church for them. Let them go to school. Gave them a first class hospital. Scudder gambled everything. Now he's got 2,000 guys here. People from all over coming to see what this thing's all about. But trouble, trouble can make us another Quentin. Trouble can start with one guy. I ever know a guy's gonna bust out of here. He's gonna find me standing right between him and that fence. I want you to do me a favor. What is it? Know much about the men's council? No, except the guys take it pretty seriously. There's a reason for that. Every dorm is represented by one guy. They elect him. Every week we meet once alone and once with Scudder. He counts on us to represent all the men. My term's up in a couple of months. There'll be an election in Oak Hall. I want you to run. Why me? Who'd you like to see speaking for us? Sanders? He's planning on getting elected. Got that little fella Haskins working for him already. A guy like Sanders can be plenty of trouble for the whole place. I think you're the man to run against him. You're wrong, Bill. Why? Because you think about going over the fence? I've been here a long time, Steve. I've seen it in your face. So what? There isn't a guy here who doesn't think about going over that fence. Plenty. You? I've been ready to go more than once. What stopped you? Come over here a second. I want to show you something. What's this going to be? That new library. Scudder gave us the wood and the cement and the steel. We're going to build it ourselves in our free time. You went to school, didn't you, Steve? Yeah, country school. I never did before I came here. Guy who used to sleep in the next bunk got me started. Always talking about that uh, medieval history. Knights and armor and all that stuff. I got so full of him sounding off about it, I just started reading up on it myself. 
You know something? What? Just start another course in it. I wasn't getting out of here pretty soon. I might get all the way through college. Maybe they'll extend your sentence. I can get along without that. I want to see this finished, though. Steve? Yeah? How about it? Would you run for the council? No, I'm sorry, Bill. I don't want any part of it. Two, three, four. Come on, Jerry, fall. Attaboy, ready? Hey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's on the wall. Let's go right in there. Here we go. Ready? Hey, one, two, three, four. Hi. Hey, good to see you. How's it going? All right, let's go ball there, Jerry. Attaboy, hey, ready? One, two, three, four. Well, I did pretty well today, so let's quit while I'm ahead, huh? Come on in here a minute, fellas. Well, fellas, you did all right today. But you can do better. We'll meet same time tomorrow. But always remember the code of an athlete. No smoking, drinking, and no women. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Hi, Jerry. Where have you been? You're late. I've been helping Ravens with the basketball team. Hope I can do it today. Yeah, no, you can do it. Two to one, you're gonna bust the gut before the day's over. What are you trying to do, make the Chino Olympic team? I'm used to lifting things a little lighter and worth a little more. <laughs> Looks to me like you need a little coaching. Guess I'll have to teach you how to do a real press. I see you worked up your usual sweat today. Brains, not muscles, son. I'm gonna hit the shower. See you. Sure, I'll take on Haskins. I got the money on the outside to get us both across the border. How much you figure on? About 500 apiece. I won't even count it as a loan. I'll give it to you. You really think we can make it to Mexico? All we need is three hours start before they find out we're missing. Three hours? Everything would have to take off just right. That's the whole point. If I can just get on that council, I'll know everything that goes on all over the place. I'll be able to move around without nobody suspecting a thing. I've got to win that election. Hey, Len. How come I always see you carry that ukulele, but I never hear you play it? Well, I just got this correspondence course. Oh, what lesson you on? Number three. Well, what have you learned so far? Tuning. How about a game of gin there, Shabby? Yeah, big man, no competition. I always beat you. I'll play with you. Okay, come on. Hey, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Brian. Drop in and say goodbye. On parole tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, sir. Sure. How's it feel going out, Johnny? I guess I'm kind of scared. Sounds funny. You wait for it and dream about it, you wait some more and die, you'll be open. I can't even make the kids forget. I've been talking a lot to this woman, you know, the one on Scudder's staff. And she's been talking to the wife, too, and, and the kids. And, and she says not to expect him to forget. They gotta face things the way they are, and just, just like me. I hear you got a good job all lined up, Johnny. <laughs> That's right. Now, Scudder talked to the officer, and they, they got me a job with a bricklaying outfit up in Fresno. You know, they even got me to the union. Supposed to make about 600 a month. Wish you guys were going with me. Well, I guess I better get out of here before the flight's on. Come on, Johnny. I have a beer for me, Johnny. Take it easy, Johnny. Drop us a car, Johnny. Sure. Sure thing, huh? I'll be seeing you. Good luck. Good luck, Johnny. Good luck, Johnny. Good luck. wife of yours doesn't miss a day, does she, Steve? No, she doesn't. You think Johnny will be okay? He gets a break outside. Funny. About a year ago, he almost went over the fence. Bill? Bill? Yeah? 
I've been thinking it over. I changed my mind about running in the council election. If you still want me to, I'll do it. too fast for me. Well, you, you don't even follow the way it's written. I don't know what you're doing. They can't write it the way we play it, man. Just forget the music and follow us. No kidding, Sam. You just can't make it? Even if we take it a little slower? Well, I can get by all right with the notes on the music, but uh, anything else, you just left me. How about your man, Bill? Think he can teach Sam in the next couple months? What do you think, Abby? Well, I don't know. You, you have to feel the riffs and things. I don't know if you can teach somebody to do it. Well, I'll try it. Maybe I can catch on if I see you do it. Yeah, come on, Eddie. Show him something. Go ahead, Eddie. Sure. Come on. Well, work into it easy, will you? It's, it's been a long time. got a chance to get that hand fixed and he won't do it and yeah, that's the trouble that he won't try anything now, wait a minute i got an idea maybe it'll work look what eddie needs is a girl you know someone to come out here and visit him give him some interest it's a good three to one shot might work we get eddie a girl we get ourselves a piano player <laughs> Come on, it's Sunday. Get fixed up. No, I'm not going anywhere. That's what you think. Okay, you've got the time. Come on, Bill. Give me that book. Come on, Come on, Bill. I want to read, Joe. Come on, Bill. 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 Come I just go around and that's it. Hey, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Through. That's good. Should work. Uh, there we go. There we are. That's it. Let's All go. Right, right, right up right. there. Come on, let's go. Put that coat in there. Atta boy. Wait a minute. How about the glasses? Let's see. This is the way to do it. Come on, let's go. Take them off. Wait, I can't see anything without that. That's all right, boy. I'll be your seeing eye. Eddie, this is Sally Haskins. This is Len's niece. Why don't you fix him up with some of that real southern fried chicken? He hasn't had it in a long time, Sally. Come on, Eddie, sit down. Come on. I forgot the coffee. Good to see you, Mary. Jerry's wife told me we were running for the council. Why didn't you write me about it, Steve? Doesn't mean a thing. Jerry said it's the most important thing you have. The council represents all the men, doesn't it? Look, Mary, don't kid yourself into thinking I've decided to stick around this place. I want to get on that council for one reason. It'll make it twice as easy when I want to get out of here. Well, Steve, you... Two more months, Mary. Then we'll never be apart again. Joe, how much longer do I have to wait? Well, it's worth waiting for, isn't it? Sure, Joe. I say, Elaine, I... Well, you have to do something while you're in here, so... I... Uh, I made you this. 
It's a case for your glasses. Joe. Well, I mean, Uncle Len told me all about you. Did you really used to play in a big band? A little bit. Would you like some olives? Mr. Garrity, please greet your visitors in the waiting room. All set, Eddie? You'll be okay. sickness coming on. Did you see the doctors that operated on Eddie? There were four of them. In his own private room. Hey, I'm not looking this place over. We gotta get a sign here. Be a good place to take off from. Changing your mind? Are you? Still a prison. I just wanted to know if you were chickening out, that's all. Look, you're not fooling anybody, Ravens. You haven't got the guts to walk ten feet by yourself. But don't worry. The election's coming up next week. That's all we need. By the way, my dad's back. Hold it down, please. Uh, Vlad. Before the announcement of the new men elected to the council, we have the winners of the Big Variety Night Award. The best entertainment from any of the dorms. The Oak Hall Parole Fever Senate.
seat. Square down. All right, wreck the place then. Smash the tables and the chairs. And the benches, you won't get any new ones. You can eat off the floor. If you've got any real gripes about the food, come to me with it. I'll do the best I can. I always have. Anyone here got anything to say? Stand up and say it. Now, some of you men have seen food riots in prisons before. The steel trays flying around, the guns and the catwalks up there. There are always a few men who make trouble for everyone. Is that what you want? Now make up your mind. You want their kind of prison or your kind? see all of you in my office in an hour. Every man at that steam table has testified against you. Sanders planned it that way. Those men are his friends. Well, what about Haskins? He's always been friendly to you, according to my reports. Here's a signed statement verifying Sanders' story. Haskins lied. Why? I don't know why, but he lied. It's your word against the others, David. You think that's enough to keep me from sending you to San Quentin with a new felony on your record? Tell me to my face I tried to start a riot. You can't do it, but you've got to convict somebody, and I'm the one. You won't even give me a chance. How do you suppose that man felt when you tracked him down and almost killed him? <laughs> what kind of a chance did you give him? I don't think you're guilty, but I don't know. I'm going to lock you up in segregation. Wait. You'll get your chance. He's a friend of yours, Steve. Why didn't you come before when I sent for you? I was on duty. I couldn't get away. Why'd you frame me, Len? I... What kind of a man are you? Sanders brought you off, didn't he? Didn't he? No, no, honesty. Get him out of here. Have you seen Scudder? This afternoon, nothing new. I'll keep in touch, Steve. See you tomorrow. You know what it's like to have a wall like that closing in on you from all four sides? It's the way it is at Quentin. That's what's gonna happen to David. Cigar? No, thanks. I know what you're thinking. I've seen you and Joe and Eddie and all the rest of them watching me. But why should I stick my neck out? Nobody ever did it for me. The guy's gotta think of himself, number one. That's how you get up there. Oh, Bill. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be like that. Eight feet tall, looking down at everybody. You don't know what I mean, do you? Maybe I do, Len. But I've seen plenty of guys like Sanders. They're not as big as you think. You've got one chance, Len. Go to Scudder, tell him the truth. If you've got the guts to do that, you'll never be just a little guy again. You won't be going to Quentin, Steve. Haskins came to my office this morning. He's given me a complete statement against Sanders and his crowd. Haskins? But last night he... Release him. Better get some rest, Steve. You look tired.
three days in here sure gave me plenty of time to think. Knowing I was going to quen for something I didn't do, and there wasn't a thing I could do about it. You know what kept going through my mind, Bill? What? That man that worked for me might not have taken the money. He might not have done it. Nobody's got a car on mistakes. I've never had any doubts before. Now I, I just don't know. I've got to tell Mary. Don't you think she knows? Maybe. But my son, he doesn't even know I'm in prison. You got any kids, Bill? No. What am I going to tell him? What you feel. Well, I'll try it. I'll ask Mary to bring him out. Come on, let's get out of here. It's going to be good to get outside again. We sure miss you. Seems like a year since you went away. Hey, you're filling out. What are you wearing now? 85. Hi, Eddie. Sally. Hi. Hi, Sally. Next semester, I'm going in the sixth grade with the big fellas. I play on our football team, too. Good. I'll get lunch ready. Why don't you and Wynn have a little exercise? Sure. Hey, Dad? Yeah? You know that pass you taught me? The one where the end goes out and stops? Yeah. I've been using our school team. Boy, does it work. Hey, there's a recreation shop over there. Why don't you go see if you can get a football? Okay. You haven't told him anything? No. I don't know how you'll take it. You'll be all right, Steve. Just be patient. I go up before the adult authority this week. And they'll set my sentence. It can't be more than a year. Maybe pro in six months. If they give me a fair shake, I can stick it out. I've waited so long to hear you say that. Ready, Dad? Oh, sure. Well, let's see how good your arm is. Practicing. Guess I am getting better. My hand's getting big enough to control the ball. That's it. What's the matter? Tired already? No. Dad? Yeah? I want to know what's wrong. What do you mean? Well, I heard Mom crying in the night. Some of the kids at school may crash, but not for long. Mom just said you'd be away for a while. Has this place got anything to do with the Army? No, not exactly. When there's, there's something I've got to tell you, and I, I don't know how to do it. Do you think you could grow up all at once? You mean get out of school and everything? No, no, I, I mean just between us. You see, all of us, when we're young, think our mother and dad are perfect. That's the way you think of mom and me, isn't it? Sure. When we get older, things never work out that way. We find no one's perfect, and it's not easy to take. What do you mean, Dad? I'm here because I have to be here. This is the place where they send people to break the law. Jail? A different kind of jail. Why are you here? I thought I knew the difference between right and wrong without any help from the law. Then the kids at school weren't lying. No. I made a mistake and I have to pay for it. I, I wanted to tell you when, but... I was afraid you wouldn't feel the same about me. But it wasn't fair to you. 
I don't expect you to feel the same, sir. Come on, let's throw some long passes. No. I didn't think you were coming. I know. It's only I 15 know, minutes left. I know. Well, what's wrong? I haven't heard from you for two weeks. I've been busy. Well, I got some good news for you, honey. We can do all the things we want to, can't we? With all that money you have waiting for us. Sure, anything. You small time hick. For months I've been coming out here playing little Red Riding Hood, making those lousy lunches, listening to your promises. Look, I meant everything I said. I love you, Elaine. <laughs> love? Have you forgotten what it takes to make this world go around? It's money, and you haven't got it. I told you I got it hidden for both of us. Yes, and I found out exactly how much. I had a little talk with your brother last week. I wanted to find out a few facts about your big fortune. $846.62. Around the world, he says. Yeah, on a banana boat. All right, I lied. I wanted you. I wanted you to wait. Well, my plans won't wait, Joe. So long. It's been real great. Back. Go get your passport. Not gonna worry about your rent. Good luck, Steve. You'll make it. Steve, Steve. Good luck. Sit down, Mr. David. Thank you. We've been looking over your case. Frankly, we can't understand why you did this thing. You have all the facts. I made a mistake, that's all. Look, David, we're not here to put you on trial again. The judge has given you a minimum of one year, a maximum of three. Our job is to set the sentence within those limits. We want to send you back home as soon as we think you're ready. But your record here is mixed. You've shown strength and leadership, along with the same faults that landed you in trouble. Maybe the best thing to do would be not to set sentence this time, but look over your record when we're here again in six months. You can't do that. I've got a plan for my family. I've got to know when I'm going to get out of here. I know what I did was wrong. Something that happened in here made me see that. But I'm not a criminal. All I ask is a fair sentence. We'll take those facts into consideration. You'll get our decision tonight. That's all. Oh, my love, my darling, I've hungered for your touch alone, lonely time. Time goes by so slowly, and time can do so much. Are you still mine? I need your love. I need your love. God speed your love. It's almost seven o'clock. Gosh, I gotta get you the radio. What's the matter with him? It's time for Dragnet. He always thinks they're gonna act out his case. 
Got some mail for you guys. Here, right, Eddie's a letter for you. That ain't nothing for me. No? When do we find out about our sentences? They said it'd be tonight. Gladstone will get them any time now. And I wish they'd tell you right away instead of making you wait around like this. That's all you ever do around here is wait. For everything. No word, huh? Nothing. Here. These belong to you. All of you. Yeah, take the pictures, too. She's your girl. Why don't you laugh? Go ahead. It's a big joke. Go ahead. What are you talking about? I got a letter. Sally told me all about everything. Told me how you guys planned the whole thing. Said she couldn't lie to me anymore. All I ever wanted was to be left alone. Whose idea was this, anyhow? Which one of my friends? We didn't mean anything by it, Eddie. We just thought that... Sorry, Eddie. Guess I had it coming. I forgot for a minute. I got my hand back. Sally wants to hear from you, doesn't she? Yes, she does. All men waiting for adult authority reports, please come up here and get them. Well, what's the word? Eight more months and I get paroled. Just eight more. Eddie? Well? Two years. That's minimum for me. That's pretty good, Eddie. Those guys are all right. Looks like they're giving us a break. Steve? Sure this is right, Mike? Six months before I even get a sentence? I'm afraid it is, Steve. be heavy. It's heavy enough. Not easy to be passed over, Steve. It takes real guts not to fight back. Why shouldn't I fight back? I was passed over twice. For a long time I hated every guy on that board. I don't know whether they were right or not. My guess is that they tried. I won't take it, Bill. I can't stand being here for another year and then maybe another. I've got a wife and kid out there. I've got to know what I'm going to get out. You can move out of here as easily as that fog will roll out of here tomorrow. Won't do you no good, even if you don't get caught. You'll never be free again, Steve. Till you free yourself inside. Oh, it won't take you as long to know that as it did me. See you later. What's the matter? We gotta make that east fence by eight. Come on. I'm not going. We'll be over the border tonight. We'll be free. So what? Okay. But keep your mouth shut. Sure. Good luck, Steve.
told you if you ever went out, I'd be here. You had it figured pretty good. Everybody's at the boxing matches. Supervisors change at eight. East fence. Don't try to stop me, Bill. You can't do it. You better go back before they pick you up. I haven't got time to fight Nobody's you. going over that fence. So, you know, for, if anybody stuck around and watched the whole movie, that's that's up to you. I'm not saying that it's a, a a great classic movie. You know, it's that isn't it. What it is is the message of the song. Sometimes we forget the lyrics could potentially mean something, rather than just being, uh, you know, some of the poppy stuff is more just uh, I don't know catchy. I guess it isn't necessarily. Uh, doesn't really send you on a deep dive into your uh, consciousness. <laughs> it's more superficial, I guess, is a way to say it. So anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed the, for those that stuck around and watched, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, there is a, um, I, I guess when I watched it, I'm, I was thinking to myself that, you know, I, I've never watched this whole movie. I've heard of it. I don't believe I've ever watched the whole movie, maybe when I was a younger kid, but I don't remember it, you know, that much. And, you know, Unchained Melody, the song, didn't play uh, really a major role in the movie. Uh, it did pop up, uh, the melody did pop up at different parts of the movie that were a little bit poignant, but I think, you know, it's always the same thing, right? Sometimes when you're put in a position where you need to think, man, can it surprise you what you come up with, right? In this movie, a prison where people can escape, but there's consequences. If they're supposed to be in prison, they're supposed to be in prison. Pay, pay their debt to society, and then hopefully move on with their life. Here at this prison, they were given different... Uh, a whole completely different environment for the most part and opportunities to be successful when they got out. I don't know what the history of the, this prison was. I was just started to look it up when the movie ended. And I uh, I think I'm going to do a little research. But I, I think it's, you know, it really does seem like, I, let me go, let me back up. I saw a documentary on prisons in Norway, by the way, 
Yeah. They're not they're they're not like the traditional prison that we think about in this country, nor are they really like this, but they're closer to this. And uh, but they're even less restrictive and less uh, different than uh, basically a normal life outside of prison. So at least the documentary I saw, I don't know if it's all prisons in Norway or just certain prisons, but um, I thought it was interesting the way they treat their uh, the criminals there. Way different than what they normally get treated here. So I'm not on a crusade to improve prison life or anything like that. I am simply pointing out that Unchained Melody, the song, boy, is there a lot to it that you just don't hear when you hear Angelina sing it. Although you can feel it when Angelina sings it. You can feel the stuff, this other stuff. But, or like when the Righteous Brothers sang it, um, Bobby Hadfield, it was just so, you know, just he did such a beautiful job. You know, there's, there's moments some singers have where they have a song, a time, a place, and it's just magic. You know, a lot of singers have those individual moments. That was Bobby Hetfield's uh, and the Righteous Brothers' Unchained Melody. You look at the rest of his career, it's really nothing there that really pops out at you. That was the moment. And, of course, with Angelina, I, I feel that most every moment she takes the stage or sings a song or walks through a parking garage or whatever the case might be, every single one of those moments to me are, that's the moment. Seems like. Or in any case, way more so than the average singer. So, I'm going to quit talking today. It's been a, I think I, this is a world record. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and got something out of it. Um, it just comes back, you know, I'm an Angelina fan. Her ability to connect, I'm going to call it the universe, to the universe, with feeling, emotion. Uh, you, it's just, it's such an enhancement to normal, beautiful singing voices that are out there. There's a lot of them. And they're really good. They just don't touch my soul like Angelina does. There's some. There's something else there. And I don't think I'm imagining it. I'm not stupid, or nor am I a sheep. I don't like being a follower. I like being a little different. But, you know, if it's there, it's there. Why does Angelina make me cry all the time? I'm not a crier. I don't cry. I'm a, I'm a big, tough, strong guy. You know? My generation, you didn't cry. Man. Real man. Okay. <laughs> now this. Oh, it's all right. You can show your emotions and all that. Yeah. Not the way I was raised. Not the way I think. Not the way I typically am. However, since discovering Angelina, I found that side of me, and it's not a bad thing. I'm saying, not saying. Um, there's days when I think, you know, man, yeah. Get a hold of yourself, will you? But. The fact is that she just has an ability that is extraordinary and unique. And I'm still trying to discover the essence of it. All right, guys. Have a nice day, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. We'll see you on the next video. And if you stayed and watched this whole thing, man, i got to come up with some kind of a trophy or something for you. I don't know what. Uh, it seems like just uh, thank you is not enough. Bye-bye.